Join me on the fourth annual homecoming and pilgrimage to Sierra Leone on December 28, 2021 through January 9, 2022. We will be exploring this beautiful country and eligible individuals will be receiving Sierra Leonean citizenship and passports. For more details, check out our website, sierraleonepilgrimage.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Go Ham Lifestyle Vlogs. Because we all need an Africa escape plan. Greetings, family. I'm Dr. Jamil Harrell Sims, and I am a proud contributor to the African Diaspora News Network. Make sure that you press like, share, and subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when we upload a new video. Today's commentary is long overdue, been wanting to do this for a few weeks. I want to talk about our brother Phil's book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind. This one right here. So when this book came out, the minute it came out, I made sure that I got a copy and I have been reading the book and I want to uh, give some commentary. I'm not going to tell you what the whole book is about. I'm not going to give. A, I want you to get the book, purchase it, and read it for yourself. I want to comment on the content of the book because it's important. And if you know our brother Phil, he's bringing it to you straight with no chaser. I really enjoyed reading this book. And as soon as I got it, it was hard to put down. I just wanted to keep going and going and going. And this is not a book that you can read fast. I read really fast, but not this one, because you want to hear, and you will hear, because if you're on this channel, you know his voice, you know his diction, you know his accent, you know how he sounds. When you read this book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, you will hear his voice in every single word that you read. And this brother is bringing the smoke, and we need that smoke. Uh, his content, table of contents, chapter one's about knowledge of self. You know, if you don't know who you are, if you don't know your history, and most of us don't, we don't, because we attend public schools, and we know all about the Mazungu, we don't know much about ours. And when we do know about ours, it's Dr. King, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, no disrespect to the ancestors, but it's the same group. There's so many we don't learn about, so many we don't know about. We don't, we're not told about us fighting back. You know about Nat Turner, but you don't know about the Deacons of Defense for Defense. You don't know about Robert F. Smith. You know about the Black Panther Party, but actually they don't even teach you about the Black Panther Party in school. So there's so much that we don't know about. Uh, and it's important for us to know our history, whether we're talking about ancient Kemet, whether we're talking about, you know, uh, the history of uh, brothers and sisters in Brazil and how they got there, uh, whether we're being taught about who we were prior to enslavement on this soil. Yes, we were already here. And that's Dr. Ivan Van Sertema. They came before Columbus. That's just one of the books and you go to the bibliography and you can see where he got that research from. And chapter two is the truth about colonization, which is in that same line. Understanding really what it's about, what it was about, and why it still continues. Because our minds are, we, we suffer from, uh, Dr. Joy DeGroy calls it, post-traumatic slave syndrome. We suffer from that. Then chapter three, he talks, talks about the biblical deception what they didn't teach us about the Bible. If you think about it, why would they teach us how to, to liberate ourselves when we are in bondage? So they didn't give you all the information. In fact, there was the slave Bible, which was a Bible given to the enslaved, which was different than the Bible that the slave master had. Then we, he talks about re-education into the truth. And in the age of technology, there's no reason why we should still be ignorant about the truth. But unfortunately, many of us are learning the truth through social media instead of books because somehow we felt fallen out of love with reading. But however you get it, get it. But check it out, make sure it's accurate. And then 
Chapter five is loving your black self. Loving yourself. Chapter six, removing third party opinions because everybody wants to tell you how you should be or, or you know, what you should do. They told us pull ourselves up from our bootstraps. They talked about us like dogs because we couldn't do that. And then when we do it, now they're calling us racists because we want to love self. Chapter seven is be fruitful and multiply. We have to keep going. We're not going to keep going with some of these agendas. We're going to cease to exist. Now, now that I've outlined these chapters for you, uh, I want to make some comments about the content. It is sad. It saddens me to know, and I've had this in my own experience, and when I talk to other brothers and sisters who are, you know, they, they, they are transitioning into a higher self, it's, it's, it's rampant. We don't love each other. You know why? Because many of us don't love ourselves because we've never been taught to do that. White, the system of white supremacy and colonization's whole goal is to keep us separate, apart, and low, on a lower vibration. Brother Phil is talking about raising that vibration and stop letting things like religion and beliefs separate us. You can be a Pan-Africanist, you can be an African spiritualist, you can be a Catholic, you can be a Christian, you could be a Hebrew, you could be Jehovah's Witnesses, you cannot believe in nothing. These spiritual ideologies should not separate us from uniting to raise our people up. We need to do that. There's some other things that are, are important besides religion and right now, politics. You know, these, this, this democratic, you know, uh, let's, I'm a staunch Democrat. When you're getting screwed by both sides, or I'm a staunch Republican, you can be conservative and be about the people at the same time. You can be independent. We, we let those things separate us. We let gender separate us. And what I mean by that is uh, women over everything all about sisters, all, you know, the women's this, the women's that, women empowerment, women this, women that, women, women, women. I'm a proud woman, but I don't need to be a feminist to, to elevate to a higher level and be what the Most High created me to be. We, we let that mess up our relationships with our men. We let propaganda and agendas separate us from our, our men without understanding they've been going, what they're going through, we have no clue. Yes, black women, we have been favored by the white supremacist. Why? He's always had access to us. Why do you think a lot of us are light-skinned? He's always had access to us, whether we wanted our bodies used or not. So we need to come get off of that brown paper bag versus the blue vein society, you know, all that stuff you know, the boule versus uh, the black grassroots, all these different things. Our minds are colonized and we think the closer we get to whiteness, the closer we are to being uh, perfect or uh, professional or being successful. It has nothing to do with that. We are our own worst enemy. I'm not taking nothing away from this system because this system created it and maintains it. But at some point, if we can decolonize our minds, we can elevate, we can build. You notice most of the time when I'm on here, I'm talking about something that's going to help us. But if I, but a lot of people are not interested in that. They're interested in um, the baby this and Cardi B that. None of that stuff has anything to do with us. It's not putting a penny in your pocket. If anything, it's making your kids stupid. I said it and have them look up to people they shouldn't look up to. And our kids wanna be rappers and they wanna be singers and they wanna be actors and there's nothing wrong with that. But we don't need, that's, that's not gonna elevate us as a people. Or athletes, when clearly your handlers don't want you elevating your people. We need our own doctors, our own scientists, our own lawyers, not like, I'm sorry, I gotta say it, we don't need settlement lawyers. You know who I'm talking about. We need lawyers willing to go to trial and make them pay the full extent. We need to be on our game. And the reason why we're not people is not because we can't, 
It's because we have to change a mindset. We have to have a paradigm shift, understanding who we are and whose we are. Brother Phil, so, you know, he's not pulling no punches in this book. This book is not for the, you know, it, it, this book is written for the average person, also the person that struggles, is written for the person who has 50 million degrees. If you just listen to the message, it's important. Been wanting to do this. I've uh, just been so busy and, and putting stuff out, but it's time to talk about the seven steps to decolonize the mind. We do need to be decolonized and it's hard, I get it. It's hard to realize that our thinking is not exactly where it needs to be. And I will be honest and tell you, I read it slow. I read it slow because there were some things, many things that he hit on that I sat back and thought about in my life, how I was messed up in the head, how I, and I'm not saying don't, don't, she putting this down, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm keeping it real. Many of us have had the type of thoughts that were not conducive to our growth. Many of us are sitting here 60, 70, 50 years old, and our mindset is still in that infantile stage. And it's not because you're not smart. We are brilliant. We built this world pretty much. We're the, you know, especially this country, we're brilliant. But it's brilliance retarded, meaning there's been an, a, an all-out war on keeping our brilliance at bay. Think about our children. By the time they get into third grade, all of a sudden they want to put our sons in special ed. Think about it, family. Read this book. This book right here is the truth. He put his heart in this book. It is the truth. Do yourself a favor. Get the book, read it, marinate on the message. Don't pay attention to anything else. Don't put the TV on. Don't put the stereo on. Don't hear the, the siren going down the street or my fish tank that's making all this noise. Read this book slowly, quietly, and meditate on what he's telling you. And trust me, when you hear that voice, he's going to hit home. And now my next thing I would ask you a question. Now that you know what you know, what are you gonna do about it? What is the solution? Let me know what you think in the comments. Shalom, may the Most High bless you. 250 years of slavery, 100 years of Jim Crow, sharecropping, the Ku Klux Klan, lynchings, bombings, mass incarceration, the separation and destruction of the black family. All of that has had an effect on our mind. Our mind needs to be decolonized. We today are experiencing mental slavery, not physical slavery as once our ancestors had to endure. In my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, we take you through every step to start releasing the chains that's on your mind. He or she who controls the mind, control the person. It is in a vested interest of the white supremacist system to keep your mind bogged down in a mental slavery, throwing entertainment, throwing drugs, throwing alcohol, anything they can at you to keep you bogged down. You got to free yourself from mental slavery. By purchasing our book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind today on Amazon. Make sure you share it with your family, share it with your friends. Everyone can benefit from decolonizing the mind because once your mind is decolonized, you will never be put to sleep again. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the African Diaspora News Channel app in the Google Play and Apple App Store.